when we're talking about inhalation, okay, we're going to look at now, what does inhalation when you inhale imply? Where is the air going? It's going from the outside into the actual chest cavity, into your lungs, okay? Now here's the thing, your lungs are surrounded by bone. Your lungs are surrounded by your rib cage. Have you ever been able to bend a bone? No, you cannot bend bone. You bend bone enough and it snaps, okay? Now, the interesting thing about the thorax or the thoracic cavity is that ribs are separated by muscles. We have these actual muscles that hang out in between our ribs and they live here, okay? That's muscle tissue. If you've ever eaten ribs at a restaurant, I, I hate to make the analogy, but you're basically eating intercostal muscle, okay? You're eating muscle tissue, all right? And it's that muscle tissue that actually is what's going to, because if you look down at your, at your thorax right now, and I want you to exhale, and then I want you to stare down at your thorax and inhale and see what happens to your thorax, okay? Your thorax actually gets larger in size. And if, if, if your thorax is not expanding, well then maybe your stomach area is expanding. Okay, it's something there is getting bigger. And it's certainly not the bone or the ribs that are actually giving here. It's the intercostal muscles that are giving along with something called your diaphragm. Remember how we talked about the diaphragm mm -hmm. as being this thin flap of muscle? So here's the deal. When we inhale, several things happen. And the opposite of these things happen when we exhale. When you inhale, several things happen to your respiratory or your thorax, okay, your respiratory region, that cause air to be drawn in to your actual lungs. And what ends up happening there is we end up going from a smaller area and we stretch it out as much as we can. When surface area increases, what happens to pressure? Does it go up or does it go down? The bigger the surface area, the lower the pressure, right? So how do we make a confined space like this bigger? We cannot fix the bones, they're stuck in place, right? Your bones don't have too much give, but what does have give there are your muscles. And there are two real important and specific types of muscles that are involved with inhalation and exhalation. The first one being your intercostal muscles. In order for us to actually pull air in and, and use this whole concentration gradient for pressure or this pressure gradient, because if something has high pressure somewhere and something has low pressure somewhere, well, that pressure is going to want to go to the low area to even them out, okay? In order to lower the pressure in the lungs, the intercostal muscles are going to basically stretch, okay? They're going to get wider. So these intercostal muscles here okay, end up getting a lot wider when we inhale. You'll see there's more space there, okay? So when we actually inhale, the intercostal muscles expand a little, all right? So they, they actually make more space in the thorax. They make it slightly wider. In addition to your intercostal muscles getting wider, the diaphragm basically tightens up, which is kind of counterintuitive because you think if something tightens up and gets smaller, it's going to take up less space. But here's the deal. The diaphragm gets as small as it possibly can, and it actually surrounds, 
Okay, this is, this is how flat it is in its smallest state. Okay, it comes down. All right, so the diaphragm ends up moving down like this, getting lower in your chest cavity and getting very small. So it basically pushes itself down and takes the smallest shape it can. And it does this to try and increase the size of the actual chest cavity. Okay? E. Now, here your diaphragm. Oh, I hate it when it does that. Diaphragm fragum constricts. It's going to drive you nuts that I have typos, isn't it? Deal with it. Constricts, which means it moves down, gets smaller. Okay? So the intercostal muscles stretch and the diaphragm comes down. So all of a sudden, that ends up causing a lot more space in the chest cavity. And when there's a lot more space, this is going to cause what to happen to the pressure inside the lungs? Is it gonna go up or down? It's gonna go down because the surface area increases, is gonna go up, which is gonna cause pressure to go down, and this is what causes air to be pushed into the lungs. When you inhale, you're not actually sucking in air, okay? The atmospheric pressure of the air surrounding you is pushing the air in to that space in the hopes that it can equalize the pressure. But that never actually happens. So just like an in inhalation, where the intercostal muscles stretch and get wider, what do you think has to happen when we exhale? They're going to have to shrink and get smaller. So they're gonna do what we call, they're gonna contract. When muscles contract, they get smaller. Okay, so these guys here, these intercostal muscles are going to get a little bit smaller. All right, and they're going to pull those rib bones closer together, okay? They're the ones that go from being yay wide to a lot less, so they're gonna actually bring the bones closer together. They're gonna make the chest cavity smaller, okay? And what ends up happening here is the whole, the, the name of the game is to make the chest cavity as small as possible. Because if you make it smaller, what happens to the pressure? If the surface area gets smaller, the pressure gets greater, okay? So what has to happen to the actual diaphragm? If we look up here, we see that the diaphragm was as low as low could be and it was as small as small could be. But in exhalation, what we wanna actually do here is we wanna push the actual diaphragm up. So, what ends up happening is we see that the diaphragm gets bigger and it pushes itself up so that all of this space here, okay, is actually not being swallowed, being part of the lungs anymore. So not only are the intercostal muscles getting smaller, all right, but the diaphragm is pushing up. So when you actually and I want you to try this. I want you to inhale, and then I want you to exhale. And even when you think you still have more, you're done, keep pushing air out. You're going to start to feel a contraction by your ab muscles. And your ab muscles are actually forcing themselves in. And when that happens, when you crunch down, it's actually pushing this stuff in and it's displacing some stuff upwards. So it's, it's forcing you to push more air out of your lungs. Your lungs always have air in them, 
okay? Even when you think you've exhaled all the possible air in your lungs, there's still air in there. And that's good. You need that, okay? But when we're talking about exhalation, the exact opposite of what happens in inhalation happens. So all of this stuff happening, your intercostal muscles getting smaller, your diaphragm getting larger and pushing up into your chest cavity, and that's going to decrease the surface area, increase the pressure. It's going to mean that the pressure inside your thorax is now greater than the pressure to the outside air, and that is going to cause the air to leave your actual lungs. You are not, when you exhale, you are not pushing air out, okay? Air naturally leaves. Yes, you can exhale and force more air out for sure, but the vast majority of just normal, regular breathing gets done on its own, okay? So this is going to force air to be pushed out of the lungs.